Good evening, everyone. My name is Astha Gandhi, and I'm here to talk about uh, circus in times of pandemic in India. What we have seen in last one year is that uh, digital media has provided artists with additional avenues to create performances. We've seen art festivals and performances going digital, creating new ways to present the body and its performance for the virtual media. However, many of these forms have become more exclusive rather than inclusive and instead of participatory have become more self-oriented. Pertinent questions to be raised are what happens to the communal experience of art, specifically those of itinerant forms like circus, which derives its very identity from its mobility. Can an, can an isolated, self-oriented experience on the screen fulfill the experience of a communal performance like circus. In India, the circus in the recent past has been uh, pushed to the brink with the changing laws which banned animal performers and more recently child performers under the age of 18 years from performing in circuses. The circus itself serves as a training ground and with no other circus training schools, the child performers and trainees have lost the space as a result, the circus has lost a whole generation of young artists. The ensuing discourse in popular media further escalated the marginalization of circus as well as its artists. The recent major economic policies of demonetization by the current neoliberal government also had an adverse impact as the regular audiences suffered an economic setback and with the laws of disposable income, uh, it caused many circuses in India to shut shop permanently from 2016 onwards. Uh, so, so why is it important to consider all of this when we talk about uh, circus in times of pandemic? Because uh, the restrictions, the bans were already growing and, and with the pandemic, the marginalized artists were pushed further to the brink. Performers who would live from show to show became dependent on donations and whatever few circus companies remain were pushed to find alternative means of survival. The alternate ways of performance and the usual struggle for artists to stay relevant during the period of crisis became secondary for circus artists. It is important to understand that for them the primary struggle was to survive through the lockdown. What happens to these performers who have no access to digital media, uh, have lost complete access to their meager audience and uh, in the absence of any kind of support and protection from the state, where do they find uh, any kind of support? So it was seen that some of the circuses uh, resorted to virtual crowdfunding campaigns through social media websites Rambo Circus, Jumbo Circus, they all try to uh, generate funds through crowdfunding campaigns. There were other circuses like the Great Bombay Circus which was stuck for months um, in Chennai in south, south southern part of India. So, so the crowdfunding did help the big circuses survive and sustain their artists for a few months uh, till the travel networks opened up again and the artists could travel back to their native countries and homes. However, for smaller circuses, the conditions became even more deplorable. A substantial number of circus artists in India are migrants from the global south and from other parts of India. So, it was only in later months of the pandemic that they started to find newer avenues for performance because the artists wanted that space. Uh, they had been in dormancy for long. So uh, Rambo Circus was the first one to go digital with its first ever digital show called Life in a Circus. The one hour show had jugglers, contortionists, ribbon dancers, aerialists, silk robe acts, ladder balancers, spinning wheel artists and along with showcasing the best of these acts which is offered by mostly Indian artists and also a few African artists who had stayed back. Uh, the show Along with that, also created a parallel network of the life in the tents, the training and the rehearsal sessions of the artists, and the difficulties that the artists face on a daily basis. 
The narrator of the film located the circus as a site of hope for these artists in spite of the conditions. The performance was done in collaboration with a production house which filmed, scripted, choreographed and directed the show. However, what got camouflaged in this mediatized version of circus was the very phenomenological body of the performer. According to Sajid Dilip, the owner of Rambo Circus, over a span of two weekends, the shows managed to have an audience of around 25,000, which is way more than what a regular circus is able to uh, generate on site. The shows managed to have an international viewing, primarily constituting of children. It created an interest in the ch child audience for the local artists, for whom special meet and greet Zoom sessions were organized after the show. The profits, he informed me, that remained minimal given the high costs of production. So, the pandemic has forced the Indian circuses to look for newer ways of performance, which so far were still stuck up with the traditional uh, ways, the tent and uh, the same uh, traditional format. Uh, but along with that, they also had to create different modes of survival. But now, with the new standard operating procedures for theatre spaces, for circuses, uh, circuses are now exploring alternate venues, on-site venues of performance as well. So amidst all of this, what was completely absent was any kind of support from the state for the artists. The government in India sent, is centred on the functioning of a global neoliberal economy, which will never accommodate culture. Although we have seen in recent past that few nation states have dispersed funds to their artists, the artists in developing countries largely find themselves without any means of survival. The cultural practices like circus, even though were part of the diplomatic program of the welfare state till 1990s, they received only minimal subsidies by the state. Circus in the current scenario finds no place anymore as it does not generate any cultural capital for the state. The fundamental question that occupies a neoliberal government is the restoration of the economy to make a decision and a choice between economic revival which had come to a standstill during the lockdown and the health of a huge population which is at stake. But what is the place for circus in such regime? Arundhati Roy defines this as a state of rupture in her recent article. There is a world before the rupture and a life after it, she says. The question remains that as this rupture perpetuates, who would have the means to survive it in the new world? And where is the circus located in that world? Thank you.